Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is Muff Day Night Raw because once again we don't know what the concept of a day is. We are 24 hours removed from money in the bank. What a night there was in Chicago. What an elacious, hectic night it was from top to bottom. A great night of action, a great night of matches, a great night of wrestling, and a great night of chaos as well, that's for certain. It all ended in the Monday Night Raw side of things with what they wanted. Mr. Money in the Bank. I will talk more about that later on tonight. Actually, I'll talk about it in just a moment. Spoilers in a few seconds. Spoilers right here, actually. As they're right there to kick things off here tonight on Monday Night Raw, we're going to have a rematch from Money in the Bank as well. The new United States Champion, Lars Sullivan, goes one-on-one -on -one against the former champion, Daniel Bryan. We'll see what happens regarding that one. But the main event of the evening, The Undertaker, goes one-on-one -on -one against Mr. Money in the Bank. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns won the Money in the Bank ladder match of this part. Well, last night at Money in the Bank. Climbed up the ladder, beat five of the men. Retrieved that briefcase and now has the opportunity of the world title for a whole year. They did it again. Raw won it again. Which is a bit of a shame, but there is so much to talk about on the Raw side of things regarding uh, what we saw at... Um, at Money in the Bank. There is a, an awful lot. I mean, there's uh, the United States Championship saga, which I think we can kick things off with. I think that would be the best way to go about it. So, if you didn't see uh, Money in the Bank, which you should have, because I've just spoiled two of the matches, um, Daniel Bryan lost the United States Championship to Lars Sullivan in a competitive, but ultimately a decisive matchup for the freak that is Lars Sullivan. He hit the freak accident, one, two, three. Lars Sullivan walked out of Chicago with the new United States Championship. I'm not too sure if Dara Ronaldo knows about it yet. Last time he hit, he was in a ghost town in Kansas. So, but uh, we are here tonight with an immediate rematch of the show. We are here tonight with Daniel Bryan looking to get another opportunity at Lars Sullivan. Non-title here tonight, but Monday Night Raw does have its Raw exclusive pay-per-view just two weeks away from now. Uh, that is going to be Bad Blood, uh, which should be a very interesting event. And given uh, some of the matches we seem to be gearing towards at that pay-per-view, I think it is highly deserving of its name. Here comes, though, a man who, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to Bad Blood, uh, well... You know, there's a lot of him that is bad, but when it comes to the blood, well, the, the blood of uh, Dara Manalo only runs with pure love for Lars Sullivan. Sullivan heading towards the ring with that US title around his waist for the very first time. This is quite a surprising look, I do have to be honest. I was not expecting to see this, all things considered. But Lars Sullivan ended up making it happen. That second freak accident brought Daniel Bryan down and put him down for good. Lars Sullivan looks to seal the door on a Daniel Bryan rematch by defeating him here tonight again. And I've got to give him credit where it's due. The belt actually looks pretty decent around his waist. I think it looks better around Daniel Bryan's waist. But it actually looks quite decent around his waist, all things considered. Lars Sullivan, anyway, readying himself up for this one. Gearing himself up for this match against Daniel Bryan here tonight. And I think we're all ready for this one. You know, uh, I talked about it being David versus Goliath, but I wonder uh, if, you know, how both men are in terms of, like, um, I guess how they're feeling would be the way that I'm trying to describe it. How they are uh, physically, how they are mentally. Like, Daniel Bryan, you know, it's only been 24 hours, but I imagine Daniel Bryan's gone back and watched that tape a bunch of times, realized how he lost, where he lost, and how to change it. And so he's going to look to do that right here tonight as Monday Night Raw kicks off. We've got a bunch of matches on the way as well. Some very entertaining ones, I believe. One match that we... Uh, one, well, one uh, match from Money in the Bank that we don't have any involvement with um, here tonight on Monday Night Raw is the World Heavyweight Championship matchup. Now, Money in the Bank, of course, you will recall that CM Punk in his hometown with one of the... Pro no, actually, I will say it. The loudest crowd of support I have ever heard. He, um... He was defeated by Marty Skrull, but... 
Marty Skill didn't stay true to his word. Skill headed into Money in the Bank saying he was going to tap him out. Saying he was going to put Punk to sleep in front of his friends and family. Saying he was going to make him fail. And he didn't. He didn't. He resorted to desperation tactics. He resorted to rolling up. Uh, CM Punk and trying to put him away as quickly uh, trying to put him away after knowing that everything he had done had failed but one key element that uh, Skill had going through throughout the entire matchup is he didn't get hit with the go to sleep he managed to avoid it and in avoiding it uh, he ended up being able to retain his title so advantage goes to him in that regard but in the same breath, uh, it, it was not a very classy tactic, shall we say, for Marty Skill to resort to that. I mean, you know, I get that uh, when you're a champion, you've got to try and do everything you can to retain your title. But rolling up a man who you had said you were going to tap out, it kind of just shows that you were not, you, you, uh, you're on a man of your word. And it kind of showed in its own aspect that uh, he was living up to the, the idea that he was afraid of CM Punk. That he fears him in some way. He feared that go to sleep heading into Money in the Bank. Did a great job of avoiding it, no doubt about it. But um, the fact of the matter is that even if he did avoid it, his own moves weren't enough to put down CM Punk. The bird of prey wasn't. The chicken wing wasn't. CM Punk gets his hands on him again. It could be all she wrote for the villain and that World Heavyweight Championship. That may be one of the only chances I get to talk about that here tonight, maybe later on in the night. But um, right now, let's focus back on this matchup here. The rematch from Money in the Bank going on. Lars Sullivan just using the power that brought him to that United States Championship last night. And there's that big-time slam. And the power of Lars Sullivan now taking over. Brian trying to cover up those strikes, but just getting absolutely wailed on there. Sullivan sends Brian into the corner. Great counter there by Brian. Moves out of the way of it. And gets a neck breaker in as well. Daniel Bryan trying to rile himself up here. Does he have it in him though to be able to take apart Lars Sullivan right now? He tried this last night and it didn't work out the way he wanted it to. Let's see if it'll work here tonight for the former US champion. Brian flips over him. Ducks under Sullivan, and this time he gets the elbow. The difference to last night being right there with that elbow itself. Brian now loading himself up. There's the kick in the leg. Takes Sullivan down to his knees. And the crowd cheering yes along to every kick Daniel Bryan hits. Another one in the head. Daniel Bryan loading himself up right now. The loss last night. Getting to him and the crowd cheering him on you. The chance of Daniel Bryan echoing around the arena. Bryan, much the same as the punk story I was talking about, couldn't get the running knee. And he might not get the chance to hit it either. Lars Sullivan. Freak accident. Will that do it? One, two. Bryan kicks out. Oh. That was close. That was very close indeed. To it being over. The freak accident ended at a money in the bank. But it wouldn't end Daniel Bryan here tonight. Bryan still standing after being swung at. Neck breaker again there to Sullivan. Like I said, Daniel Bryan didn't get the uh, running knee last night. If he hits it here tonight, can he put away Lars Sullivan with it? Sullivan won't stay down long enough though. He rolls out of the way there. Bryan comes running in. And look at this. Daniel Bryan. Bryan with the yes lock. Bryan with the yes lock on Lars Sullivan. And Sullivan taps out. The United States champion just one night after winning the gold taps out to the former challenger. Well, that seals that in my eyes. No doubt about it that that can be made official. In my eyes, I'm looking at Daniel Bryan versus Lars Sullivan again at Bad Blood for that United States Championship. I might not be the Raw General Manager and I might not be the one capable of making these matches, but I most certainly see that match on its way. Daniel Bryan just beat the champion. If you beat the champion, a title opportunity is waiting for you.
Ryan may only be without that title for two weeks in that case. Lars Sullivan with a very shaky showing in his first match as champion. Great stuff though for Daniel Bryan. A great victory there for Daniel Bryan. Very good. Very good. Very, very good indeed. Great way to kick things off on Monday Night Raw. We keep on going on here with what should be a very um, compelling matchup between the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, and Jay Lethal. Both men trying to do whatever it takes to get their way into bad blood. I mean, the United States Championship suddenly looks locked off, so they're going to have to find their own ways into uh, that championship. Look at the pyro there for Shawn Michaels going off as the Heartbreak Kid heads towards the ring. Certainly a uh, crowd favorite in many regards. Shawn Michaels heads towards the ring. He's had a bit of a janky start since showing up on Monday Night Raw. Hasn't really done too much of note. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't think he's actually done anything. I know he's had a match, but <laughs> that's about all I can think of. Shawn Michaels here tonight looks to get a win though of another man, of course, who came over in the draft. Uh, Jay Lethal came over from SmackDown Live, maybe? I think, I think it was SmackDown Live. Um, Shawn Michaels came over from ECW in the draft, so both men each looking for something to do here heading into bad blood I mean vengeance the last raw exclusive pay-per-view went great for for Jay Lethal in that regard he got himself an opportunity at Daniel Bryan and the US title back then great competitive matchup great respective matchup as well uh, but it was Daniel Bryan of course who walked out the winner so you can tell from the fact that Jay Lethal does not have the United States Championship and isn't getting a rematch either nevertheless Jay Lethal Heads towards the ring right now to do battle with CM Punk here. These are two very, very talented athletes going one-on-one -on -one with each other. Both men in their own ways kind of have similar aspects to them. That speed that they possess, that uh, technical wrestling, the ability they possess, and those big moves they can hit out of the blue. And of course, uh, Shawn Michaels' biggest move is a move that he can hit from out of the blue. That sweet chin music. Maybe a vast number of people who can hit the super kick, but no one can hit the sweet chin music. Quite like Shawn Michaels. So here we go. We are about to get underway in this one. I'm looking forward to this one. I think this one will be, uh, you know, as opposed to the last one we just saw where Brian and Sullivan have that kind of uh, spat with one another. You know, they both want to be the champion. There's something on the line. This is a match for both men to try and win here and just to, you know, I guess... Uh, the better term would be to, um, you know, enjoy in some ways. Enjoy uh, instead of a, you know, a very um, back and forth, not back and forth, a very, uh, a very um, hard hitting, I guess, violent matchup. They're just, they're just engaging in a competitive matchup with each other. There we go. I finally got my point out. I'm still fatigued for money in the bank. I'll be honest. It was one hell of a show. So you'll have to forgive me for if it takes me four and a half years to try and say anything. Nice gut wrench suplex though by Jay Lethal. Lethal, a former United States champion. Um, in his own right, very long reigning. Might still be the longest reigning United States champion in this universe. Not 100% sure on that one. I think the reign clocked in at about four months, maybe five, uh, when he held the title, which is... Definitely longer than most. If not all, of course. Jay Lethal made a mistake. They got a little bit too confident, and Shawn Michaels makes him pay for it. DDT there by Michaels. Shawn Michaels, of course, uh, wanting to become a triple crown champion. The only title he needs is that United States Championship. Former tag team champion uh, twice, I believe. And um, former world champion as well is Shawn Michaels, previously holding the ECW Championship a very long time ago. Still yet to hold that United States Championship and make that Grand Slam, sorry, not Grand Slam, a Triple Crown title a reality. Shawn Michaels looking to fly, and Jay Lethal there just moved out of the way at the last second. Smart by Lethal, but one hell of an impact into the mat, into the outside there for Michaels. But the Heartbreak Kid reeling himself on, rallying himself further as this one continues on now. Referee starting his count up to 10. Lethal now going after Shawn Michaels on the outside, though. Front face lock. Is Jay Lethal having uh, in his mind here? Is he thinking about taking him to the barricade? 
Shawn Michaels ain't interested to find out. He fights out of this one. Referee's count still going on here. Back in the ring we go. The count of seven now. Great to see they actually return to the ring. The match can continue here. Michaels back suplex there. Nicely done indeed. Here goes Shawn Michaels continuing on, taking out the arm there a little bit, doing his very best, just isolate parts of Jay Lethal. Make sure that the self-proclaimed uh, greatest first-generation wrestler cannot fight back. And now all of a sudden this crowd is starting to cheer HBK on as well. They want to see the heartbreak hit succeed. They want to see him be the winner here tonight. Michaels look for something, but oh, the only thing he was running into was a DDT, courtesy of Jay Lethal. Lethal now, primed up and ready to go with a big move, maybe. Michaels denies it, bats him away a little bit. Running elbow. Michaels able to shut things down just a little bit there and create some more breathing room for him. The veteran instincts of the heartbreak kid there. Giving him that edge he needs in order for success. Sweet chin music! The tune has been played with one, two, and a kick out from Jay Lethal. Oh, wow. Michaels must be frustrated at that one. I mean, he struck it from out of nowhere for certain, but usually catching someone off guard would result in getting the win, and it didn't. This one continues on, and Michaels could very well be frustrated here. Count as Lethal again, though. Got busted open from that one. Michaels gonna fly and gets that chop there. The cover on Lethal, trying to hope for the end there, but it's not the case. Chin lock applied now. Michaels maybe, you know, he put a lot into this uh, last few seconds of offense. Maybe trying to just chill out a little bit. Make sure he doesn't wear himself out too much. Jay Lethal brings him back in there. Nicely done by Lethal. Brought him into, a, I, I guess, a... A false sense there that he was going somewhere, but brought him back. And now Lethal firing himself up here. Here we go, Jay Lethal. Two clotheslines. Ducks Michaels, and a super kick to Michaels. That's a bit of disrespect when you think about it. That's like, it's like hitting the spear on, I was going to say Edge, but Edge has no respect for anyone. So gloss over that one from the top. Elbow drop. That is one of Michaels' signature maneuvers as well. Michaels didn't take too kindly. Flying forearm and the signature kip up from HBK. Michaels goes up to the top rope now. Moonsault to Jay Lethal. I don't know, you know, I thought he was going to go for that elbow drop, but Michaels seemed to think against it. Brings Lethal to the middle of the ring. And this is how you seal the deal. You tune up the band. Michaels, sweet chin, no! Lethal ducks it. Snap German suplex from Jay Lethal there. Michaels though back up to his feet here. And here goes Michaels now. Flying forearm again. The atomic drop. And then the slam from HBK. Shawn Michaels now riled up. Ready to go. Ready to close this one out and be victorious. The flying elbow drop. And he gears himself up to close this one out. Tuning up the band. And sweet chin music. That should end it. With two and a whole lethal at the last moment. Getting that shoulder up just in time. Couldn't have been closer to three if lethal tried. Michaels now though, not giving him a second to rest. Jay Lethal's probably in agony. And Michaels with an inverted figure four here applied. Or well, his own variation of the figure four applied here. Definitely locked in on Jay Lethal. And Lethal has no choice but to tap out. Lethal just kept on trying to fight on. But I think at the end of the day, he was in too much pain. He was going through too much in this matchup to hang in there. And the torque applied in that figure four just resulted in the submission victory for Shawn Michaels. Lethal, though, after all of that, still stands. And Michaels offers the respect. Lethal shakes the hand. Like, like I said, this is what it was all about in this matchup. Just two guys trying to be the better wrestler. Two guys trying to get a win over the other. And that's what it resulted in. A shake of the hand and a raising of the arm. That is, all, that is, that is what I like to see here.
Monday Night Raw usually chaotic place, but when you see bits of respect like that, it means an awful lot, and it's a good thing to see. What we won't be seeing is any respect in this match, though. Coming up next, as they gear up for their matchup at Bad Blood, it was made official during the week that the Good Brothers would face these guys, the revival for the World Tag Team titles. There is no respect between either side here. The Revival have been fully on the launch here, attacking the Good Brothers at any opportunity they can. Just after Vengeance, literally just after their victory at Vengeance uh, to last week on Monday Night Raw when they came up in a tag match against each other. The Good Brothers came out uh, as they were making their entrance. The Revival jumped them, attacked them, and got the win over the Tag Team Champions. And with that, the Tag Team title opportunity at Bad Blood. A non-title win is a lot to take into account. And of course, be put, you know, putting it very simply, um, if they, you know, if they can do it again, this time the titles will be on the line. They will be the tag team champions for the second time. But here tonight, we're going to be in for one-on-one -on -one action. Dash Wilder going to go up against Carl Anderson here, and of course, uh, the uh, either member of each team is going to be at ringside. So Scott Dawson and. Luke Gallo is going to be a ringside for this one, but here we go. The Good Brothers prepared the four-time World Tag Team Champions, the greatest tag team in the world, and a team wherever we go, beloved by the crowd, as we can hear, as we can hear here tonight in Detroit. They head towards the ring with the fan support. They head towards the ring with the gold, but at the Bad Blood, will they have the latter? I certainly hope they will. But it's that matter of will they or not that really, that really adds importance to every matchup here. You know, momentum is key. Sometimes you hear phrases like momentum is 90% of the victory. And that is certainly the case. I mean, if you're taking loss after loss after uh, week after week, do you really have the momentum within you to want to keep on going? Do you really have the momentum to want to keep on trying? Not really. That's all I would say in that regard. So it's crucial here tonight that the Good Brothers turn things around. They turn their fortune around and Dash Wilder uh, is defeated by Carl Anderson. So here we go. Again, things underway. Carl and Elbow tie up. Anderson pushes him away there. Jawbreaker. But it's Scott Dawson to get things going. Let's see how either side will go about business here in the early goings of this matchup. Of course, singles match is not really either side's forte. Carl Anderson, before he joined this universe, has had singles match experience. But um, certainly not for the Revival. They are very much a tag team centric kind of wrestler, uh, the both of them. They rely heavily upon their partner. That is the kind of style they've trained in. They've essentially just trained together and learned to train off the other. So it's key that they can, uh, it's key that they can get something going with that. In a tag match, yes, of course, but they have to be able to do it in a singles match as well, and that might be where Carl Anderson has the advantage. We shall see. Roll up here by uh, Dash Wilder, hearkening back to uh, last night at Money in the Bank, countered there by Carl Anderson, roll up of his own, and almost got the victory there. Good Brothers became tag team champions for the fourth time at WrestleMania. Defeating the Brood to regain those titles. Meanwhile, the Revival came over in the uh, in the draft from SmackDown Live and are looking to and have looked to immediately stake their claim on this roster. Tilt a whirl neck breaker by Dash Wilder there. And make no mistake about it, the Revival have gone about things in the biggest way they possibly could. Their first uh, sight of them on Monday Night Raw was them attacking the World Tag Team Champions at Bad Blood. So make, uh, sorry, not Bad Blood, Vengeance, sorry. Um, so make no mistake about it, this one is uh, most certainly gearing up to be a big one when Bad Blood arrives. There, there is certainly Bad Blood between either side, as we're seeing in this matchup here. Fireman's carry, backbreaker there by Dash Wilder, and he could be on his way to trying to close things out here. He covers Carl Anderson, hoping that's enough. Gallows just slid in a chair. Guess the Good Brothers aren't afraid to go to any extent for victory. Chin lock applied, though, by Dash Wilder. No flips, just fists, of course, this mat-based, striking-based uh, idea of the revival. Something that has brought them great success in the past, but Carl Anderson trying to put that out of the way here. There's that dropkick from Anderson. 
And Anderson now might be gearing himself up to close things out here. Come on. Go on, KA. Distraction by Scott Dawson there on the referee. I think he was trying to help his man get back in it. But that hasn't gone the way he wanted it to. Gunston! This is over. One, two. Whoa, a kick out. A kick out by Dash Wilder there. Okay, that was unexpected. I'll say that. Dash Wilder now with his counter. A reverse DDT. Oh, no, the double knee face buster from Dash Wilder. A portion of Shadow Machine. One, two, kick out by Carl Anderson. Wow, if this is what they're doing in a tag, in, in a singles match, imagine what we're in for two weeks from the, you know, uh, uh, two weeks from now in that tag team matchup for the tag team titles especially when there's gold on the line imagine the resorts they'll go to in order to be the tag team champions both men just stomping kicking at one another now trying to just get the upper hand on the other at this point Carl Anderson in trouble here nope countered Irish whipped him into the corner Anderson now oh running boot in the corner there Stumbling around a little bit as Dash Wilder counters it. No! And again he gets it! The double knee face buster! Right in the face! Take a look at how quickly a move like that can be hit. And how quickly Carl Anderson could go out. This could be what happens on next Sunday. It's another win for the Revival. And that puts them at 2-0. Against the World Tag Team Champions. What does this say for the hopes of the Good Brothers heading into next Sunday? What does it say for them heading into that event? I uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, the Good Brothers have, have bounced back an awful lot of occasions where it seems like they could be the underdogs, but... It's looking problematic right now. A victory there for Dash Wilder over Carl Anderson. You know, we saw how personal this match can. We we saw how personal it can be. Imagine what they'll do when uh, when the titles are on the line. We'll see uh, next Sunday. But we're going to move on to our next contest here. It's Cassius Ono, a man who has been rallying the support of Monday Night Raw, the locker room, and myself all at once, going one on one against. Uh, one of the representatives of Raw uh, in the Money in the Bank ladder matchup, that was Triple H. Cassius Ono heads towards the ring and he is getting some uh, incredible uh, uh, momentum going for him. These victories as of late, truly um, uh, showing how dangerous that death by elbow can be when he hits it. When he strikes in, you know, when that elbow's going into the back of someone's head, on the past two occasions now, no one's got up from it. James Storm didn't, and Kofi Kingston didn't. It's just been victory for Ono, and that has basically been it. If it can keep them down for the three count, could do the same here tonight for Triple H, and that could be a huge win for Ono. Without a doubt, one of the biggest of his career. You know, Ono, when he came to Monday Night Raw, was already kind of uh, Harkening in with that United States Championship, but now he's taking on some of the big characters around here. He's taking on the likes of Triple H, one of the staples to Monday Night Raw. And of course, my favorite to win, my, my, my well, not my favorite, but my pick to win, Money in the Bank last night. Such a shame. This guy deserves the world title. When can we make it happen around here? Well, Triple H certainly hopes at a victory here tonight can get him somewhere closer to that one. I wonder how the game is feeling, though. It's only been 24 hours since that Money in the Bank ladder match, and Triple H took a lot of offense, but he gave a lot of offense as well. Triple H was really the commander of the ring for a lot of that matchup. There's no doubt about it. He was going in that ring. People were climbing up ladders. Triple H was getting them off. People were going to think about climbing up the ladder. Triple H was making sure they weren't going to climb them. Triple H climbed the ladder. Someone tried coming up the ladder with him. Triple H was making sure they weren't going to stop him for winning that briefcase. Triple H was asserting himself, really, as like the uh, the head guard of Money in the Bank. But when it came down to it all, Triple H just didn't have enough to grab that briefcase down and take that title. It's a shame that that is the case, but that is what happened, sadly. But 
Triple H needs to bounce back from that. He needs to bounce back here tonight with his victory here tonight to Bakashi Sona. But Ono, of course, is hungry for his own opportunities as well. He's hungry for a shot against the big talents like Triple H. And he may well have the prime opportunity to defeat them. Triple H, of course, is reeling. Like I said, he is uh, he's not at 100% following um, Money in the Bank. There's no doubt in my mind that Triple H is not 100%. No one who was in that match is going to be 100% for, at the very least, this whole week. Especially guys like the winner, Roman Reigns. He got superplexed and cutted off a ladder. I mean, sure, you know, he got the spoils of being Mr. Money in the Bank by the end of it all. But the fact of the matter remains, he is nowhere near 100%. He's not going to be near 100%. He's going to be uh, hurting when he comes to his match later on tonight. Or up next, rather. As is Triple H in this one right now. He's definitely going to be hurting. He's, you know, he's going to have to almost play defensive, which I don't think is something that Triple H is too... Um, happy to take you know I don't think Triple H has uh, any intentions of wanting to go on the defensive yet I think his sole mindset of, is that of wanting to remain on the attack you know wanting to stay on the offensive so here we go now they take one last look at each other and the matchup is underway Colin Elbow tie up between these two men as they both look for that all important victory heading towards judgment they of course I don't know what the state of the United of the uh, World Heavyweight Championship is going to be. I don't know if CM Punk's going to be do a rematch or not. Of course, Monday Night Raw doesn't exactly have long to plan out these things. Their pay per view is in two weeks. They have one more show after this to get us uh, to give us something to look forward to. A Bad Blood, which is um, you know something to think about. But of course, we do know that some matches, at the very least, are on their way. Uh, if you've been watching for the last few weeks, you would know what I'm on about. We already know two title matches. Or at least for sure we know one title match and we're on our way to knowing the second one. Um, but aside from that, we uh, don't really know too much about the other two titles. We don't know too much about... Um, well, I think we know a bit about one match. Um... Regarding a man in the main event, which I will talk about when I get the opportunity to. But right now, I just want to focus on this matchup here. Triple H taking the very early lead in this one. Elbows repeatedly into the head of Cassius Ono there. That is brutal from the game, but he's more than happy to inflict damage like that to his, uh, his opponent. And have no care either. Down on the arm there. That is devilishly smart by Triple H. Attack the arm. You're taking away death by elbow. Triple H is thinking tactically there. He is thinking um, resourcefully. He is thinking with his best intentions. Nicely done there. And already the Detroit crowd. Smart ones in the crowd. The very smart ones. No to cheer for the right man. Cash is so no Irish whip ball. What a bicycle kick there to... Uh, to Triple H, but the game is able to almost just kind of shrug it off in some regards and just keep going here early on, taking, trying to take the early lead of this matchup against Cassius Ono. Goes for the cover there, Ono's foot. Yep, definitely pressing against that bottom rope there, so no surprise that um, that was a kick out. Whoa, Triple H early on with the spine buster. Well, that's a surefire way to change things around in this matchup now, but Triple H knows that it probably won't get him anywhere closer towards this tap out victory chin lock applied there but it's fought out of by Ono look at how Triple H stays in control only temporarily though Ono with the uh, with the counter there oh boy straight jacket power bomb oh yes great strength from Ono to not only cross his arms around and be able to do such an intricate maneuver but to hold him up there for as long as he did and come down with that power bomb it's great stuff by Ono snap me there Nice knee in the back now and wrapping the arms around the jaw there of Triple H. Not choking him, but certainly wearing him out here. Forcing his own arms against him. That is a move that undoubtedly hurts. Great counter though by Triple H to get himself out of it. And Triple H now. Oh, sly move there. Thought he was going to run at him and go for the full-on uh, attempted clothesline, but... Another maneuver there, and I think that absolutely caught uh, Cassius Ono off guard. 
Triple H now picks up Ono here. What else has he got in store? Nice, a, a hefty punch there. Triple H 100% in control of this matchup right now. Too early though. And a counter there by Ono. Can turn things around for him in this matchup. Oh, buckle bomb. Sudden buckle bomb as well. Triple H was not prepared for that one. And as a result, he hit hard. Ono now in position. Looking for the discus big boot. Oh, he got him. Absolutely drilled him and now oh no looking for the victory. Look at his seal. The fate of Triple H. No. Triple H counters. No death by elbow for him. Pile driver for oh no. That was close for Triple H. And I have Triple H even knowing how dangerous that move can be there. His decision to try and get out of it as early as he possibly could there. Showed that he knew if he got hit by it, it was lights out one, two, three. Victory for oh no. Oh no! Uh, if Ono has gone be being this dangerous with that maneuver, there's no doubt in my eyes that he's been practicing that move for some time. Now that he's been winding up how to hit it even worse than before. Gotch pile driver there to return the pile driver prior, and Triple H has to resort to going out of the ring temporarily and trying to create some separation between him and Ono. Back in the ring we go now. Triple H trying to take an early advantage there with Ono sneak uh, with Ono slipping into the ring, but he couldn't. Grabs that gotch pile driver with too much of an effect on him. Up in that power bomb position again. Triple H with no escape. And face first into the turnbuckle padding. Cassius Ono right now. Really taking care of business. Ooh, Triple H though kicking out very early on indeed. Split between these two. Neither one wants to let the other one stay in control. And certainly neither man wants to take the finishing maneuver of the other. Certainly not, I think, in the case of Triple H. You know, we are seeing how hurt Triple H is. He cannot stay on offense because he's so hurt. There's no doubt that Triple H is trying to stay in control, but he just can't because he's taken such a beating in this one. Not in this one, sorry. well, kind of in this one as well from moves like the Gotch pile driver, but undoubtedly as well in the money in the bank. But I may not stop him. Triple H! Pedigree! Good God! How sudden it can strike! Pedigree by Triple H! Middle of the ring, he covers. Oh no! One, two, oh wow! A very early kick out, a two there. For Cassius, oh no. Usually they use up as much as the count as they can and just barely get their shoulder up. Oh no, comfortably got that shoulder up at an early two count. And a cravat suplex now shows that oh no is turning things around here. Goes for the cover after it, trying to slow down some time a little bit as well. Trying to make sure that he has time because he definitely felt the impact of that, uh, of that move. Ono right now thinking though. If he's been trying to take away death by elbow, then uh, Ono will take away the pedigree. Oh, another power bomb on its way here. Yes, it is. Ono showing great strength. That's the second power bomb he's hitting this matchup now. And it's looking like it's going to be the second discus big boot as well on its way for Triple H. Oh, he got him! And this. This should be the one. This should be it. No. Again, Triple H finds his way out of it and backs up there. Triple H is fearful of that death by elbow. Doesn't that just go to show you what a difference two weeks can make and how Cash Ono can just excel in this short amount of time? Remember, CM Punk did his best not to get hit by it as well in their match. As too is Triple H not going to try not to get hit by it here tonight. Triple H fighting on here, and again he gets out of that hold by Ono. Very competitive. This matchup could truly go either way between the two right now. Triple H, though, re re regaining control in this one. Beating down. Whoa, 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 what? It's the world champion. What's Marty Skill doing here? Why is Skill here? And Skill... Oh, my God! Skill attacking! Cash is Ono! Why? For what reason? Marty Skill has gone for a steel chair now. Triple H has just walked out of here in protest. 
He's not interested in any of this. Triple H going backstage and Marty Skrull is beating down on Cassius Ono with the chair right now. Why though? For what reason? Skrull with chair in hand now. No. DDT on the chair. Just 24 hours after Bailey escaping Chicago with his world title. Marty Skrull now is brutalizing Cassius Ono. And a bird of prey there from Marty Skrull. This one's over. Marty Skrull standing over the, the man who was trying to just become victorious. That match could have gone either way. And Marty Skrull made it all about himself. Folks, I don't know, I don't know what to say about that one. I honestly don't. Why? Skrull only just escaped with his life and his title in Chicago. And he tries to do that here tonight. The villain truly is living up to his name as of late. I can't believe that we just saw that. But more importantly, why? Why did we see it? I, ju I just don't get it. Anyway, um, we're going to move on to our next contest. It's the main event of the evening. Answers will need to come next week because, you know, we don't have a number one contender to the World Heavyweight Championship right now. But it's almost like Skrull is trying to cherry pick his own one. Anyway, we head into our main event. And the trilogy of matches here as of late between these two men. The Undertaker and Roman Reigns had two matches uh, beforehand. One on an episode of Monday Night Raw and one at Vengeance. Roman Reigns won them both. Of course, if you've been harking your mind back to Vengeance... It was on that night following that defeat to Roman Reigns that The Undertaker snapped and turned on Mordecai. It was Mordecai who made Undertaker go into that second match. It was Mordecai who forced Taker into that position. And it was The Undertaker who had enough of being uh, under, the, under the spell of Mordecai. Who had enough of Mordecai trying to control him. He acted out. He lashed out. And with a choke slam and a tombstone, The Undertaker we all know. The dead man we all love came back to our side that however has not sat well with Mordecai as we have seen Mordecai screwed Undertaker of getting into money in the bank and said that only one man would be resting in peace and it would be the Undertaker Taker responded last week saying that these games are just that Mordecai will not be escaping this one there is no high high priest like figure for Mordecai, there is only the Reaper on his way. He will collect his soul and he will make sure he rests in peace. Those two men, no doubt in my eyes, are gearing up for a big one. We'll see what will happen regarding that as time goes on, but I can only make insinuations right now. We are on our way for our main event. Here comes Mr. Money in the Bank. He is bruised, he is broken, he is beaten. Roman Reigns heads towards the ring though to face an old rival again and the Undertaker is not interested in waiting any longer. Taker going right for Roman Reigns here and we're underway on the entrance ramp. DDT onto it by the Phenom. This is Undertaker's first match against Roman Reigns since he's become free of what, Mor of what uh, Mordecai had him under. It's the first match that He's been, this is the first, uh, you know, match against Roman Reigns that he's been in since he's no longer a member of that brood. Since he is his own man once again. Is that going to be in a different Undertaker? I don't know. But one thing is for certain, both these men want this win over the other. For bragging rights, for the, 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 the chance of being victorious, for the beating an old rival, and just winning here tonight in the main event on Monday Night Raw. Roman Reigns is money in the bank, of course. He's Mr. Money in the Bank. He is bruised, broken, beaten, battered. Whatever you want to say that involves pain, Roman Reigns is that. As I said, he took a superplex off the ladder by Kurt Angle. He had a leaping cutter hit on him from Chris Sabin off the ladder. I believe he was hit by a pedigree. He was hit with end of heartache. He was hit with almost every finisher he could have been hit with. And yet Roman Reigns was still able to climb up the ladder and be, be Mr. Money in the Bank. Though there is extreme doubt and there was collusion being called uh, I note this between uh, Bobby Fish and Roman Reigns like Fish helped Reigns I don't think that was the case at all I don't think in any way shape or form Bobby Fish tried to help Roman Reigns I think he wanted to get Reigns off that ladder himself 
That's how self-centered Bobby Fish is. And as a result, he screwed himself over and Roman Reigns took that briefcase down and became Mr. Money in the Bank as a result of it. Well, you, you can hear in this crowd right now anyway in Detroit as we focus back to the matchup that they are cheering The Undertaker on. It's so great to see Undertaker free of Mordecai, free of anything to do with the brood for the first time in oh, since September last year. He finally got free. Eight months of being under that spell and he finally got free. He got himself out as quickly as he could and that is just that's just what I want to see. That is something I'm glad to see in that regard as well. Strike there countered by Reigns right now. These two men know each other so well. Their experience with one another in these singles matches uh, help to show that point. They know the back and forth moves. They know how much they're going to need to put each other away. Let's think back to Vengeance though and how surprising it was. Undertaker hit I think two tombstones on that night and couldn't put away Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns hit one spear and beat the Undertaker. So, will that be the same here tonight? I certainly hope not. All depends on how much force Roman Reigns can put into moves as well. Like I said, he's hurt. He is very hurt. There's no doubt in my mind that he's hurt. Undertaker is fresh. You know, he's got that He's got that going for him, but I don't think Roman Reigns, you know, uh, I don't think The Undertaker's going to make excuses if he loses here tonight, and nor is he going to look to that for why he was victorious. He'll just look at the fact that he was the better man here tonight. Nice superplex there, though, by The Undertaker. That leap as well, flying him halfway across the ring with it, and oh, God, seven foot up, seven foot down. Choke slam by Undertaker. But Roman Reigns is pulling himself up to his feet. Oh, and a clothesline there by Reigns. Where did that come from? Oh, but Reigns could only fight back for so long there. Countered by The Undertaker. And here goes Taker now, attacking Roman Reigns. This is going to hurt him. Shoulder into the turnbuckle. Best of luck hitting the spear when your shoulder doesn't know how to work. And the Undertaker there with that. Synonymous slice of the throat. And now The Undertaker primes himself up in position. Undertaker ready with it. Tombstone pile driver there. But Roman Reigns' foot is underneath that bottom rope. Taker should have moved. He should have gone the other. If he had turned left, Undertaker would have been able to avoid. Or right, rather. He would have been able to avoid the ropes. And Roman Reigns might not have kicked out. For all we know. Brought that one upon himself in my eyes. But that has given Roman Reigns a chance back in this one. Reigns with a spear. Will that end it? One. Two. Undertaker kicks out. Vengeance. This is not going to be. History will not repeat itself here tonight for Roman Reigns. He is going to have to find a different way. And look at Reigns now. Strike after strike, punch after punch to The Undertaker and up and over he goes to the outside. Roman Reigns got two in over his head there. And that cost him. That cost him big time. And the Undertaker not only shut down his offense, but has taken control again in this matchup here. Choke now by The Undertaker and here he goes. Or not. Back body drop there. I think. Oh, I think Undertaker's leg got stuck on the barricade as well. That is gonna. That is gonna kill. Roman Reigns now on the outside plants him down on his hip there. And back in the ring we go. Roman Reigns in control of the matchup once again here over the dead man. Roman Reigns now in that crucifix powerbomb position. And leads it down into the sit-out powerbomb. Will this do it? Undertaker kicks out again. You see the frustration within Roman Reigns there that this isn't over yet. He wants it to be over though. Like I said, he's reeling. He is hurt and he knows it. And this ain't going to help. Another choke slam. 
Undertaker can't afford to make the same mistake again though. He can't afford to have Reigns in the ropes when he looks for this tombstone. Oh, I thought he was going for it then. What a slam though. And he will go for it again. Undertaker needs to move away from the ropes urgently. Or otherwise, this isn't going to be it. Otherwise, this could end it. Tombstone pile driver. Roman Reigns again, though. Feet pressing against those bottom ropes. No, no doubt in my mind that's a rope break. I think that kind of shows, though, Taker is desperate to beat Roman Reigns. Desperate to show that without Mordecai, he can do it on his own. He can beat Roman Reigns. Another fight back here from uh, Reigns, though. He won't give in. Roman Reigns finding it too hard to give in right now. Keeps on fighting. What a snap me there. Did you see how far off the ground Roman Reigns went? Let's see what will happen here. Both men looking for that next big move. That next big one can certainly help them towards victory. Big flying clothesline there by Roman Reigns. And maybe now he's getting riled back up. Mr. Money in the Bank still fighting on with incredible strength. Just 24 hours after one of the toughest matches of his life. Schoolboy powerbomb. Undertaker kicks out though. So how much more do they both have to try here in order to be victorious? How much more do they both have to do to put the other one away? Superman punch by Reigns! The answer could be soon, but Reigns can't capitalize. He's exhausted. He's fatigued. He wants this over. And the Undertaker's not interested. Reigns is trying everything here. Swing and a miss there. Backbreaker by The Undertaker. Both men doing whatever it takes. This Detroit crowd getting riled up for this one. And a third time. Choke slam from The Undertaker. Picks up Roman Reigns. And he's going to lock him in now and down into the mat there. That arm trap reverse STO. Undertaker now, now he looks for it. Let this be the one. Tombstone pile driver. One, two, the Undertaker has beaten Roman Reigns. Finally, the Undertaker's done it. He wins in the main event. He beats Mr. Money in the Bank. The Phenom has beaten Mr. Money in the Bank. The Undertaker did it. What the hell? Oh, not again. Not again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is Mordecai's in the ring. The Undertaker's got Mordecai. What's going on? Wait, 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 what? Mordecai's issuing a challenge at Bad Blood. He's challenging The Undertaker. He wants to end this where it all started. He is challenging The Undertaker at Bad Blood. And that gong could well be The Undertaker's response. Undertaker standing on top of hell in a cell. Undertaker accepts. But he welcomes Mordecai to hell!